Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Agents of Fandom YouTube channel. My name is Ron Cretero, and I am here for a special interview with the director of a new documentary streaming on Netflix called Who We Become. Welcome, PJ Raval, to the channel. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, it is uh, it's a real honor to have you here. Um, I'll, I'll just get it out from the get-go. Like, I am a Filipino-Canadian, and... Uh, through my work here at Agents of Fandom, I have been looking to talk to more Filipinos in the film industry because I, I just love film. And, you know, growing up, I didn't really have that kind of, I, I never really saw anyone like me, whether in front or behind the camera. So getting this opportunity to sit down with you and talk to you about, you know, your work and the getting to be the voice for Filipinos is really, really uh, a dream come true to me. Oh, thank you. I mean, I have a very similar experience. Like when I was growing up, I didn't really see anything reflected of my own experience, which is why it's amazing to be a filmmaker now and, and trying to, you know, contribute to changing that. Yeah. And, you know, that's that leads right into my first question is what led you towards film and specifically documentaries? Yeah, you know, to be honest, I never thought I was going to end up as a filmmaker. <laughs> like, there's a lot of filmmakers who say, like, you know, I was a kid and I watched this movie and suddenly I wanted to make films. That was so far from my experience. I didn't even think it was a possibility, you know, and I think it's because the environment that I grew up in, it didn't... Um, it didn't nurture me that way to, to think that was possible. And I think part of it is because what we were just mentioning, like I didn't see any of my own kind of experiences reflected and I didn't know any filmmakers who were of Filipino descent at the time. Um, but eventually I ended up, um, you know, going to college. And while I was there, I double majored in, um, you know, um, prepare yourself. I double majored in visual arts not a shocker, but also biology. Oh. And I actually finished my degree in biology and I studied, um, yeah, I studied molecular biology. I actually really enjoyed it, but um, but I also really enjoyed art and mostly photography and through photography and really enjoying kind of like street photography and thinking about how it was an amazing way to experience the world, capture the world, you know, experience it, capture it, and then present it to the world. Um, I kind of discovered documentary filmmaking, which is kind of um, just that to another, you know, to another level. So, um, so yeah, it's really been kind of a surprising journey. I am surprised every day that I'm a filmmaker, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm deeply grateful that I am, and I can't imagine doing anything else. Oh no, I definitely i I can see that through your body of work. Like, I'm glad that you pursued this because I, like I said, what what you are presenting like either, you know, through the experiences that you have part of the LGBTQ uh, community or as a Filipino, like getting to have that voice. And I'm glad that you're, you know, presenting that to the world because we need more voices like that. And thank you for, you know, being part of the ch championing that out into the world. And- Oh, thanks. Yeah. So I want to talk, obviously we're here to talk about who we become and I want to hear directly yeah. from you because I think that like hearing, cause I could just, you know, read a synopsis or share my own thoughts, but I think hearing it from you, the person behind it all, I want to hear like, what was the process like making who we become and what, and creating this, this, this story of looking back at some very hard years for, you know, the whole world. Yeah. You know, I set out to make a film that would feature this concept that I learned more recently called Kapwa. And for you know those who are watching and listening, if you're not familiar with that word, it's a Tagalog word, you know, uh, the language of the Philippines, um, and it doesn't fully translate into English. But from what I kind of understand, the way that I've been translating it is it maybe means togetherness, or like a shared identity, community. Um, you know, one of the protagonists of the film, Jenna, has a really poetic uh, definition for it, which is "I am because you are." Um, and I just really love that idea. And when I heard of that, you know, growing up here in North America, and especially the United States, I think a lot about the concepts of like American individualism and exceptionalism. And so when I hear the word Kapwa, it makes me really think about uh, Filipino culture and, and, and those, you know, of Filipino descent. And I love that idea of the community. So I think at some point, I recognize that I had met a lot of 
younger uh, Filipino Americans, Filipino Canadians who were very outspoken and passionate about social justice issues, about you know the way that they were thinking about the world. And then I was I would discover that they had a lot of family members and close loved ones who maybe held very different, if not completely opposite, points of view and perspectives. Um, yet these people managed to hold a relationship between them and not uh, enter a kind of divisive or divided kind of relationship. And I think that's something that a lot of people jump to immediately when they think of things like politics or difference of opinions. It's very like, you know, the holidays can be a stressful time period. I don't want to go home and like argue with my uncle, that kind of thing. And certainly that's definitely true to the, you know, culture of those of Filipino descent as well. But I think for me, this word, this idea of kapwa, this idea of, you know, Filipino culture really centering this idea of, of um, community and family um, was something I was really interested in exploring. So I set out to, you know, make this film uh, and then the pandemic hit. Okay. <laughs> you know? And like everyone else, you know, we found ourselves in really unprecedented times, you know, really moments of transition and self-reflection. And so I thought, you know, what better time to really be jumping in into making this film and documenting, uh, you know, this moment. Right. And, you know, one of the great things of, of this film is, like you said, you're capturing different opinions, obviously, you know, some you may agree with, some you may not disagree with. And it, I, I just love how clever it was that, because the, the film follows three different uh, Filipinas, uh, Lauren, Monica, and Jenna. And through their family dynamics, you see that it's very, it's, it is all relatable to, to so, someone can relate to each of their family dynamics. But they're all very different where, you know, sometimes the parents are very open to having these conversations, sometimes completely opposed to it. They don't want to talk about the politics. They don't want to talk about mental health. That's a, these things are such to hard topics to talk about, you know, with, between a parent and child. So I wanted to know, like, did you intend to have that kind of um, through line throughout the, throughout the movie? Or did it just naturally come up that like, oh, these are all different opinions that you want to explore and see different perspectives of? I did to an extent. I mean, I was very interested in capturing these intimate and deep and challenging, you know, conversations. And I think I thought it would be an amazing way to really see the love between family members and between friends and community, because I think you really have to have that in order to enter these conversations and be vulnerable and understand that you're going to be entering a conversation with a difference of opinion um and still find a way to navigate through that and hold respect and hold uh love there right so when i decided to make this film and i um you know decided that we would be following uh lauren uh monica and jenna you know i had conversations with a lot of them you know very deep in-depth uh conversations about what was going on in their lives how are they feeling like you know what what were they thinking about their relationships with their families and loved ones and and perhaps maybe, you know, making the film even gave them an opportunity to kind of enter this space um, that maybe they hadn't fully gone into before. And so, um, yeah, so, you know, we, we did have these conversations and it was definitely something on my mind in terms of entering these vulnerable spaces. And I guess it was important for me to make sure these were things that they wanted to do. Right, that I wasn't forcing them to do that, that they wanted to do this and could see the benefit of it. And thankfully they they all were um, enthusiastic about doing that. Yeah. And speaking to that, like one of the 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 one of the moments that really like hit me was that that conversation with Lauren and her family during her graduation night, where it's th this very open dialogue, very real of talking about, you know, what what are you gonna do when the pandemic's over? And and talking about like respect to parents, you know, talking back, like, you know, it's such a big thing among immigrant parents, especially Filipinos, where just just defending your point can feel like disrespect. And, you know, again, like a lot of Filipinos can relate to that. And I just really enjoyed how, again, that open dialogue and, you know, uh, seeing that it's there. It, I know this is parent-child relationship is so is such a hard thing to kind of break through 
but through Lauren and her family, we really see like, you know, the walls kind of come down and they're having this very, very open discussion. And I just want to ask from your perspective, like how for people who are struggling to kind of get into that relationship with their parents or even parents with their child, like how, what is the way, what is the through line to that? Like, what is the gateway to, to have that kind of relationship? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's what I'm also hoping this film can be is maybe an example, maybe a guide, maybe a tool, you know, for some people to see an example of what's possible um, and see different stages of it, right? Like the three different protagonists, you know, they're all in different uh, moments in their life and different um, ages too, you know, in different and different stages of relationships with their with their families. And I think it's an ongoing process. It is a relationship. And I have to say, you know, just speaking from my own experience, that I think it took me a while to really start seeing my parents specifically as people. <laughs> you know, right. like I always thought of them in a very specific way. And and you know, growing up, I held them, you know, in a very specific way. And I think as I've gotten older and, and, and as I came into my own adulthood, I started understanding their experiences as well. And, and, you know, and to be quite honest, I can't even imagine, um, you know, immigrating to a new country, leaving a whole family behind, you know, um, you know, that's a certain kind of bravery and boldness that I don't even know if I have in me, to be quite <laughs> honest, you know, but that's, but that's the experience of my parents and probably many other, you know, uh, people's parents and generations before them as well. And I think, as an adult, I can start understanding the choices that they've made and their experience is very different from mine. And I think it's taken me a while to understand that we have different experiences and they cannot have the same expectations placed upon me or assumptions because it is different. And that is actually what they chose also, right? Mm -hmm. By coming to a new country, they have kind of made that, they laid that groundway and path for me. Um, and I think as I came into my own, it made me realize I needed to communicate to them what the experience was for me because it was very different for them as well. And I think we see some of that in, in this film and we see different ways of approaching that, whether that be a group family discussion, whether it be a Zoom call between, you know, uh, mother, daughter, mother, son, you know, um, any of these kinds of, um, you know, modes of doing it. But I think what it takes is maybe a decision and a consciousness to kind of go there, right? right? And so maybe the film becomes an example for someone of of how to do it or what's possible. Oh, and yeah, I, it's you know, I'll be frank, like I don't have that kind of relationship with my parents or or family members like that, but you know, seeing seeing that 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 that's what it can be, it's inspiring to see and like how how natural that kind of came up. Like I obviously I'm I don't know the full family dynamics, but like just seeing how natural that kind of conversation come up and how open the parents are. And especially when there are differing opinions and they can agree to disagree. But um, I think it was Jenna's mom or dad who really said like, I'm glad that you do talk back because it's like, it shows that you stand for something. And I think that it's like a real, that's a hard hitting moment where like, you know, it's not a sign of disrespect. It's just times are different now, you know, and, getting to see that throughout this throughout this movie is really, really great. And again, you you cover so many topics in like an hour and 15 minutes. You cover COVID-19, George Floyd, Black Lives Matter, anti-Asian hate crimes, and the 2020 US election. So what was that like trying to put that all together and just seeing it through the film? Like it, it all happens kind of, I never realized like, because we don't like to look back at that, that time period, but it all happens very close to one another. So what was that like kind of putting that all together and ending the film where it, where it did? Yeah, I mean, I think when people watch the film, they realize this is what I lived through and right. <laughs> experienced also, right? And, and, I, and I think all of us, at least, you know, speaking for myself, I think, you know, it was just a matter of getting through it and try, you know, and you know, making decisions and figuring out, you know, how to move forward through everything. Um, and maybe a lot of us haven't had a moment to just kind of take a breath and reflect upon what, um, how much has changed in the last couple of years. And when you see this film, it's undeniable, right? How much, how much has changed and, and how much still surprises me, you know, here in the United States, when 
we were having our um, elections, I had forgotten the um, vaccine hadn't even been released yet. So even to just go out and vote, it was a big deal because, um, you know, you're putting yourself at risk. Things like that I had maybe kind of forgotten already just kind of in the timeline. And so it was kind of uh, a reminder of putting everything into perspective. But I think it also puts everything into the perspective of what we've lived through, what we've experienced, what we've survived, what we've grown from and what we've learned from. And so, um, yeah, so I think when most people watch it, I think they are going to undeniably reflect upon their own experience within the last couple of years. Right. And, you know, one final thing while I have you is, you know, the, the, the whole, you know, this, this message of, you know, being active, whether it's donating or just being aware of these things, like, and we get to see that through different perspectives, again, through the parents, through the kids, what, what advice would you have for people who are trying to get into, to try to have a more active and supportive voice to, you know, to human lives and everything? What, what kind of advice would you give for them to get into that direction? You know, going back to this idea of Capua, which really was an inspiration of the film, um, you know, it is this sense of, a, a sense of belonging, a sense of togetherness. And, and I do, we, when we think about that, right, we can think about it from, you know, family and friends and community. And I think one thing that um, for me was exciting about making this film and discovering it in the process for myself is that, uh, I have a deeper understanding of my own experience as someone whose family hails from the Philippines, but was born in North America and raised here in the United States and recognizing that my experience is very different from the generation, you know, before me. Um, and that experience of growing up part of a diasporic community, part of a community that, you know, um, descendants from the Philippines, but raised here in North America, even my concept of Kapwa is maybe different because, uh, you know, living in a community where I am considered a minority identity and, and parts of different um, identities that are marginalized on the daily, right? I, I understand how my sense of community um, extends to understanding my experience in relation to and parallel to those of black and brown communities, you know, other people in the LGBTQ plus community, you know, understanding um, that uh, women and female identified individuals, um, you know, face very specific, um, you know, hurdles um, and, uh, you know, issues as well. And I think for me, that idea of COPWA then extends really to this idea of solidarity and allyship, right? And um, you know, Jenna, one of the protagonists in the film has a friend named Rachel. And in one of their exchanges, Rachel has this really beautiful line where she says, you can't walk along someone until you know where you're walking from, right? Yeah. And, and from that I got, you really have to understand your own history and what are the challenges you face to really understand what someone else is facing as well. And I think in the process of doing that, uh, we really can um, have an understanding and a connection and a deeper connection within different community members. And I think soon as we start thinking that way, then we can see how we can be part of that change, how we can, uh, you know, be there for our community members. And I think it's a matter of that idea of COPLA, like not only thinking of yourself, but thinking of yourself in relation to others and thinking about how you affect others and how they affect you. I love that. I'm, and I'm glad that 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 was like that talk between Jenna and Rachel was like kind of the last scene that we see because it, again, that it ties into Kappa and what Rachel and Jenna talk about in that in that final moment is like really captures the entire message of the film. And so, I mean, I can't sing the praises enough of, you know, who we become. If for anyone who's watching, if you haven't already, please go see the film. It is now streaming on Netflix, which is Create, which is amazing to see because, you know, this Filipino doc documentarian getting their film on one of the biggest streaming platforms in the world. So it's, I'm really happy that it's going to get the eyes that it, it deserves because it, it's such an important film and it's very relatable. Again, like I'm part of that younger generation. So thank you so much for making yeah. this film. Yeah. 
Thank you. And I want to give a shout out. You know, the way that this film ends up on Netflix is because a company like Array Releasing, you know, who is led by some amazing, you know, fierce women of color, such as Ava DuVernay and Tulane Jones, you know, and Mercedes, like these women really have paved the way for people like me to be able to have a platform for, you know, me making the, you know, for me sharing these stories and, and bringing them out into the world. So it really is a moment where, it really is about um, supporting community. And I really, you know, tip my hat to them for for allowing me to have this platform. Yes. It's <laughs> <laughs> your name, everyone. Yes. So speaking of your platform, where can the people find you on socials? Yeah, I'm all over social media, just at PJ Raval, and that's P-J-R-A-V-A-L. You know, the film is Who We Become Doc. Uh, we're on, uh, you know, Facebook and Instagram, threads, you know, uh, even Twitter slash X, whatever, <laughs> whatever it yes. is now. Uh, and you can also find us at who we become, uh, doc.com, but mostly you can find us on Netflix. So please tune into Netflix and watch it. And it's important for me to ask you all to watch it because I think, you know, what we're also hoping to do is to send a message to the film industry and to Netflix to say that, you know, API stories really matter and that we, you know, that there's audiences really here ready to, to watch them and we need to see more of them so that, uh, you know, this current and younger generation don't have to experience what we did, which is a lack of representation of seeing ourselves on screen. So hopefully, if anything, people will feel like they've been seen by watching this film um, and by watching it, we will let everyone else know we want to see more. Couldn't have said better myself. I'm glad you took the time to say that because again, yes, <laughs> we need more uh, Asian representation on screen. So thank you for taking the time to sit down and talk. Uh, it's, again, it's it was a dream of mine to kind of have this kind of conversation with s someone like me in the industry. So thank you for joining us. Again, everyone, make sure to watch who we become on Netflix. Thank you for tuning in to the Agents of Fandom YouTube channel. You can find us on socials on Twitter slash X at Agents Fandom. Instagram, Agents of Fandom, Facebook, Agents of Fandom, or you can find us also at agentsoffandom.com. Links to different articles covering representation, covering different movies, shows, comics, books, all types of stuff. So thank you. Have a good one. Thanks. <laughs>